Yeah, most definitely, man, because if you look at, you know, some of the stuff that we see going on, like, for example, you got a black man like Kanye West. He's a billionaire, but you can yeah. see that he's, he's unhappy mm-hmm. one way or the other, you know, with something. So, so money doesn't always solve all of our problems, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, post-COVID, uh-huh. And the funny thing we always say, well, if I had that money, I know I wouldn't be like that. We don't know. Because, like, like for me, I battle with mental health issues, bipolar and um, depression and anxiety and stuff like that, you know, PTSD. And, you know, it comes from a long with stuff that I've been through, you know. So depression is real. The mental health is real. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I was just about to say that post-COVID pretty much every human on earth has some type of mental health issue, but it's such a stigma, you know, with even just talking about it, but it's something natural. We all get sick. We all get injured. So it's not always physical and it could be mental. So I started a black man's mental health group and a black boy's mental health group because a lot of times we are the last people to ask for help, but we also the last people to receive help. You know, um, we done got so desensitized to seeing black men getting killed and beat up and hurt that we don't even think that we feel pain anymore or we don't even need help. So, you know, it's very important the things that you, you know, address. And the way we was brought up as men, we was taught a man ain't supposed to cry. A man ain't supposed to show his feelings. But for me, I'm a sensitive person. I like showing my feelings. I like letting my emotions be known because I don't like when I keep them inside. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what a lot of brothers are doing. And then you see on the news, they explode over something so small, but really it's a buildup of decades and, yep. you know, a lot of trauma that they done been through. Yep. And let me see. I want to ask you about one of your books. I was checking out your page and I did see the flyer for the player. Now you saying that that's a movie and a book. Yeah, um, would you be able to tell us a little bit about it? Oh man, the player, it was, it was based on, it's, it's one of my alter egos. And one of my friends was like, yeah, I like your books, man, but we want to, we want to show the other side of you, you know, the old you. So I decided to write a story and it's based on these characters. It's like Z and this, and this three other women and they get involved in a love triangle and he has to choose which one, but become, of come choosing one of them, it, it's all this backlash. And then they starting to find out about each other. And then he has one where she ends up pregnant and here comes the boyfriend. He's, he finds out. And so it's a big, it's a big drama field film, but it shows the black man at a vulnerable point. It shows him as an emotional person and that this person has emotions as well. So when I'm telling this story, you can hate or love the character because the character still has emotions. And then we decided to do the movie. And man, when I tell you that movie is it's like that, it's like that. It's it's romantic, it's elegant, and it's smooth. Yeah, yeah, definitely sounds interesting. Now, I want to ask you, now, how involved are you in the movie? Are you acting, or are you a uh-uh. part of writing the screen? Or? I went to the, um, basically, I just sent the synopsis over. My mentor, she went on and um, put it together, and she already knew what my mindset was at before we even did the movie, because we talk on a daily basis. So when she did the movie, she already knew how I wanted it done. And she doesn't and put it everything into the movie. And it came, I'm like, like I'm watching the movie crying because I'm like, yo, that's me right there. You know what I'm saying? And so that was the blessing. I'm like, man, I, I love it. I love it. It was a good experience too, because like what author that you know, I only been in the game, this will be my fifth year in the game since I started my first book. And I've been nominated every year for author of the year. Um, one and two times, one runner up in 38 countries. And just to be, as far as I done came, I ain't even have no business manager, none of that. I was just hustling, grinding on my own. You know, I had a voice and I wanted it to be heard. Wow, that's amazing, man. Wow, wow. I take my hat off to you. So I guess my I was going to ask you, now the player, now you got a second installment of that or it's multiple two. versions of it? Part two now. So we're going to wait about another year and a half to bring part two out. Yeah, but part two just as good as the first one because I had an idea 
part one was basically an idea. But part two, I already was like, all right, I already know how to go with it now. So with everything that's flows, the characters, I mean, it's, it's, it's bad, man. I just enjoy writing, you know. And for me, it ain't even all about the money, man. It's just, you know, trying to show the young kid it's a, it's a better way than being on a corner and being on a block all day and doing something that you like. It ain't about the money. When you chase the money, you ain't going to get it. You let it come to you. Be patient. And I've learned that. Be patient. You, and In that patient mode, you find out who your friends are and you find out who they're not. Man, that's real talk. Patience is a virtue. You got to have patience. Yep. Like a game of chess. <laughs> you got to think yeah. through before you move. Because you, you'll have people on your coattail. They're trying to ride you to the top. And then when your fire died, then you see them gone. But you still persist. You're like, I watch you. I watch you. But at the same time, you know when to strike. You know when it's time for you to do what you got to do. Because God, he didn't gave you the time. He didn't reserve his moment for you. So whatever he got reserved for you, he ain't going to take back. It just wasn't your time. And then when you get there, the people are like, well, how did you do this? How did you do that? I just waited my time. 